Afternoon, Jim. Afternoon. Well, I quickly got taken away from Jim for a few minutes here. The neighbor up to the north has got a little CRP area up here, maybe 10 to 15 acres. He's required to burn it halfway through the contract, and we didn't want it coming all the way down the ditch here and getting into our farm, so we're just back burning it up this way, kind of against the wind here, and just creating a buffer so that his big fire up there doesn't come down this ditch. It's all permitted, everything's fine here. You know, he's required to burn it, so it's all good. Nobody, nobody flip out, man. That was from Half Baked. Anybody catch the reference? We got a good amount of room there now, it's all safe. I'll go back to work with Jim. Let's go see if we got the right fitting to put that hose together. We also need to check and see if we got a 669 and a 467 filter in here. So I grabbed a whole bunch of stuff, filters for multiple things. Uh... There they are, they're in the big boxes. 669. There we go. So we got both filters we need for the big horse. And I'm hoping I got the correct coupler here for a hose so we can use the great big oil drain pan. We lost our hose when we lost the building. So the pan filled up and I never I never replaced the hose so that we could get the pan empty. And that's the pan I'm talking about there. So that's full of oil. It's got a pump on it so we can get it up there and put it in the drain here. But I haven't had the correct fitting. There we go. As long as that fits on the hose, we'll be okay. Seems like there's some smoke out there now. That fire must have got moving pretty good. I'm glad we backburned. Just kidding. This fitting isn't gonna work. So back in the pickup it goes. We will change probably four engine oils without it, and then by the time we get the correct fitting, we'll be on the final tractor. So we're gonna go back to using old-fashioned pails. Shh. Maybe this one's up top. I don't remember. Oh yeah, there it is right down down there. That's where it comes out of. Onyx says I'm lined up down there. So I'm trying, but I can't get two fingers on it to turn the valve. This is not as handy as they probably There we go. There we go. Anything yet? I'll open it a little more. You got a little stream. A little? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to get my hands on it again. There, now there should be more coming in yeah, a second. Yeah, there is. Just it, a little more, but it's... I can it, speed it up. So I can get the camera down there, but I can't get down there because I'm elbow deep in a diesel engine. You can give me the camera. Well, is there, is there a valve on there you got to turn? Yeah, it's got a valve on it, so it's not a, it's not a plug. Okay. Well, that's but you can, nice. <laughs> it's nice, but you can't it. really get to it very well. I did have my arm in there, but it doesn't have to stay in there now. Jim, what did you do on the floor there? Quit. I should rub your nose in that. <laughs> Think you got it? Yep. Afternoon, Anna. You've been napping in the garage? It's too nice to be napping in the garage. Need roughly 12.7 more gallons of engine oil. Time to check out a couple of things on the 6175 here. We're gonna pull the bucket off so that we can get under the hood a lot easier. And we're gonna check a, a cylinder leak back there on the rock picker, see if we think we need to take the cylinder off.
leaking at all right now? Either direction? What about the fitting on the bottom? Is that dry too? Completely dry? I suppose we just clean it up real good and watch it then? Apparently, it's barely leaking. It doesn't take much oil to make a big mess, but it, it's a big mess. Jim says it's not worth taking the cylinder off. He thinks it's the seal, but it's a really slow leak, so we're just gonna get the bucket off and go through the tractor. There he's unlocking the bucket. Just like a disconnect on a header. So clean you can eat cheese it's off the floor. Feel that it doesn't look good. Nothing. Shop back down. This one's got pieces of its own self all over in there. We'll put it with that airbag. File it away in the sanitation plant somewhere in the county, I suppose. That one seems to be working a little bit better. Yeah. Alright. See how many hours are on this thing. Oh yeah. 564. I'm not going to tell you how many hours were on the filters last time they were changed. We're just going to say they need changing. All right, Anna, let's see if we got a fuel filter for the little tractor. We need a 507. Mm. Correct fuel filters are located and have been installed. Now to dump the oil, change that filter. Now, let's see. How can I do this and make sure I get plenty of oil down the armpits? <laughs> If that's the case, Jim, yeah. why don't you come show me how to do it then? I'm, uh... You're, you're busy? I better, I better go. Oh, you better go first? Show up. He says, what time can you be home? I say, I'm about four or so. It's about four or so? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go then. That's that. Just for feeding them fuckers. Sorry. That's a gymism. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Panic for a second. Thought I didn't have another bucket. Onyx, bring me a couple more rags, please. I can't turn the camera off because my hands are too dirty. Oh, I'm old. Well, I was talking to it. Oh. Okay, uh, go get a third pail now. Okay. Quickly. Oh, you'll be all right. Good. Very good. Two is good. Got the screen all cleaned out. We'll let that oil finish draining while I find this back into its place. Hey, Didge, you come to visit? Jim left us. I don't know where Onyx went. I think he went to go eat Girl Scout cookies. Not a bad choice. Kind of peaceful in here right now. I won't do it again, because they look comfortable. If I do it again, they'll get up. Okay, filters are all done. Tires are all good. Grease fittings are all hit. Coolant levels are good. Filters are good. I think everything is good. So I'm just gonna fire them up, make sure they got fuel in them. Just because sometimes they get air in them when you switch those filters, so make sure they're running. Close the hoods. Tomorrow I'll double check the oil level. Yeah. Mm. That's the same thing that one did yesterday. We're gonna let it prime a couple more times. All right, a couple more cycles. Come on, tractor. Pick up, pick up. There we go. 
One tractor down. Tractor two. Neato. All right, shields are back on. Hood's down. Now to get this thing back on. She was real fussy, but I got it. Well, once again, we didn't get as far as I had hoped to today. So I'm just gonna back this in. It's gonna sit here overnight like it did last night. But it's done, and so is that tractor. So tomorrow we will definitely hook up the field cultivator and get it in here. In the meantime, I wanted to show you guys how impressive the hair and makeup crew is on this production team. They can completely make it seem like I've done stuff today. <laughs> so impressive nowadays. Anyway, I'm gonna wash this makeup off my hands and we'll see you guys tomorrow. I, I was gonna say morning, but we're way past that. I just had lunch. Anyway, it's another day. And a nice one at that. So we got a pallet of parts there, mostly sweeps for the field cultivator that we're gonna put on, and a bunch of filters and stuff. But this unit's all done. We can get this out of here. This is all done over here in this area. And we're gonna hook that to the field cultivator and I'm hoping that can pull in here and fit in here without moving the seed tender. But we're gonna find that out. But first I'm gonna open my new, uh, my new jumper pack here. Not an ad at all, by the way, because I'm sure some people will think that. I'm just flat out excited about it because this one is supposed to be big enough that it'll start semi trucks that are dead. Look at that, 4250 amp. So I'm just gonna get it charging because, I mean, I just have the feeling I'm gonna need it at some point soon. Okay, the new toy is charging. It's a toy for me because it should make my life easier. Just like the skid loader is a toy for Anna, no matter who's driving it. I forgot that I was gonna fill everything with def before I pulled it out of the shop. It's still got over a half a tank of def in it, but for me it's just like a weird check it off the list mind game type of thing. If the tractor and the rock picker's finished, I want it all finished. I want it full of diesel, I want it full of def, I want it ready to turn the key and go farming. Just set it right here, that way it's between the doors and it's kind of out of the way. Get it as close over to here as you can. I'm getting a little bit low. Luckily I have what looks like to be 130 gallons or so right there. And 100 in the Thunder Creek trailer. But I could use another one. I could use another 200 gallons. You know, I'm in the rock picker and it's all running well. There is that pesky rock that's been sitting there all winter. And so I'm just gonna take a second here to relocate it. works. I suspect it's possible there are still a few more rocks out there, but I'll wait until later. Trucking. Part of his homeschool lessons for today. Making laps around the bins, practicing our shifting. This is real world schooling right here. Go. Yep. There we go. Even got Anna watching you. Oh, you found it. There 
go. Truck driving lessons are over. I'm gonna move a couple things around here. Onyx, why don't you start the big horse in there and pull that out and back it into here, back it up to the field cultivator. Okay. Thick. Thick. However that goes. I'm gonna leave it folded up to start with because we kind of usually do the field cultivator in sections where we do the mainframe, go through, hit the sweeps, grease everything, including the wheel bearings, check the tires, all that, and then we open up the wings. That way it's just less area to climb around underneath on the concrete floor. What do you think, Didge? You all wound up over something? Onyx ran in to grab a little lunch. In the meantime, I'm gonna unhook this truck because we have an, another truck issue. It's not a big deal, but we're not in a hurry with the trucks now because we don't need to haul anything for a couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna drop it off and let the truck shop have at it. At some point, there's probably a balancing point where I need to consider if it's worth keeping these T800s around. They're not that old. They're, they're almost 20 years old now, but they're good trucks. They're lightweight. They turn nice. They're good trucks. Or do we look at updating, getting some newer stuff? Because you can get some pretty good used trucks right now. The truck market's really softened. I don't know. We like these trucks. I just, you know, you got to keep updating stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah, just give me a call when you leave there. Okay. I'm going to have Becky and the kids pick me up from the truck shop because they're going right by on their way home. But they haven't left yet, so timing isn't right. Here we go. Make use of the time I have. May as well start on this thing. Tire pressure. And wheel bearings. And other pivot points that require grease, of which there are not many on this machine. Well, I got one tire and one wheel bearing done. That was quick. You gonna make me sit in the back seat? Yeah. Thanks for the ride, girls. All right, three more mainframe tires to go, but I gotta crawl around on my knees for this, and then, of course, there's a there's a few more to check as well. But I'm just gonna do the mainframe for now. Good. <laughs> Too bad there isn't a pit. A guy could pull this thing over and stand in. Mainframe tires and grease should be all good. Now the next thing is to work on these sweeps. These are a wear down part, I guess you could call it a wear part. You can see we replaced a bunch of these towards the end last spring, I suppose, because they were the first ones wore out because they go right behind the tires. But you get out on the wings, that one's getting a little thin. That one's awfully thin. That one's pretty good. So I'm not gonna replace them all. That one's questionable but I am gonna replace the ones that need it. And it really doesn't look too bad. It looks like we must have replaced quite a few towards the end of last spring. So it's definitely not gonna get a full set of new ones. Although I have a full set of new ones in here, the new hardened ones. So these are gonna last a lot longer. These are nice. So I'll put on what we need now and then we'll put on as we go throughout the spring. <sighs> I hate this job, but it's gotta get done. The more I stand here and stare at it, I mean, nothing changes. I keep trying. You guys have probably seen us do this before. We got this handy little tool here that hooks in there. Sometimes you need a hammer to help it a little bit and then you, you know. For the new guys, I'll show you. But I'm gonna switch sides with the camera because the lighting's better there. And I'm actually a professional actor and camera guy. Dirt down the back. So it's got this little spring here that clicks right in to these grooves and holds it in place. There we go. New one's on. It just isn't fun crawling around on your knees. 
That's all. And then once in a while you'll get a bent shank right here. You can see that when you look down the row from the outside. These ones all look, oh no, I can already tell from this angle that that one's bent. So we'll have to take that assembly off. But I tell you what, I'm just gonna pick away at this for a couple hours before I go in for supper. I'm all alone, I don't have Jim or Onyx or anybody with me, so you guys aren't actually here with me, but I appreciate you watching. By the time you watch this, I'll be all finished. So, uh, that's it. Keep it between the rows. Check out our merchandise link below. Thank you. Mm -hmm.